What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. So originally today I was gonna work on the Challenger, that bad boy behind me, but I just got back from Mission Window 10. I got some tint done on the Ram and uh, my radiator's leaking. So I got a new radiator. I need to fix that because that's actually my daily driver. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna do in today's video is replace the radiator on the Ram and then um, I should be able to just get started on the uh, Challenger because I want to get that uh, aero kit you, uh, from MFR Engineering put on the car and uh, get this thing ready for a track day. So I got less than a month for the SCCA track night in America at Harris Hill Raceway and that's really my focus right now. So I'm going to get the Infinity out the garage, I'm going to get the Challenger out the garage and pull the Ram inside. So let's get to it. So we've got the ram pulled up, got plenty of room to work. We got a new radiator right there. And pretty much, let's see if you can see this on camera. This right here is where it was leaking. And since I was all the way in San Antonio, I had to make a quick repair just to uh, limp it back home. So I've been home for a little while. I just needed to uh, cool off before I started working on it. So I got myself an oversized drip pan, got the radiator, uh, I got some fluid. So now I just need to start uh, tearing it apart. I've actually never worked on a ram taking off the radiator, but as you can see, everything's up on top, so it shouldn't be too difficult. So I'm just gonna dive right into it and then just start taking it apart. All right, so before you, I even take anything apart, you always wanna make sure the parts you got, you know, they're in good shape. So I just checked out the radiator. I got this out of Riley's, nothing too crazy. It came with some new tabs, so you can put the screws in, uh, mounting hardware, you know, stuff goes like right here. So, uh, radiator's good, it matches up to this radiator. You always want to check because you just never know. Alright guys, pro tip. First thing you want to do is take off this, um, Pull reservoir and your windshield washer reservoir. So there's two plugs on the back side of it, electrical plugs. You unplug those and then you take off these two uh, 10 mil screws that hold it in right there. And then you just put it off to the side. You want to take off the air box as well. That way you have the room here to work with it. And you don't really want to unplug it because you don't want all the extra coolant you know, falling everywhere. So now it looks like, I'm sorry about the bad lighting. I'm going to get a light out here in a second. Uh, so it looks like I'm going to get this fan shroud off. And it just looks like maybe a couple 13s right there. One there, one there. So it looks like four. Now a good tip to find out where the screws are located is just look at your new one and try to find the mounting. And that's a good way to measure or to uh, look at where the uh, mounting bolts are gonna be. So it just looks like four of them. Get the shroud out the way and then uh, we'll be back in business. All right guys, so I haven't really drained the uh, radiator yet because I came, like I said, from San Antonio and I waited about an hour to let it cool down, but I mean, this thing is still pretty hot to the touch. So what I've been doing is loosening up everything in order to get to all the other bolts while I let it cool down a little bit. I got my drip pan underneath the truck right now. Um, and the only things really holding this radiator in place right now are the upper and the lower radiator hose. Now, looking at this, there's a couple things that are attached to the radiator. So we have the power steering cooler that's attached to the radiator, as well as a transmission cooler. It's all factory stuff that's attached to the radiator. So the best way to do this is to take off the bottom transmission cooler first because it's bracketed underneath from front to back of the radiator. 
once you get that loosened up and you move that out of the way, there's only really one bolt holding the power steering cooler in place and two tabs that slide into the radiator. So I'm about to show you all that right now, show you where the bolts are and how I'm taking it apart. And hopefully by then it's cooled down enough and I can start draining it. All right guys, so here we have the, you got the radiator, you got the power steering cooler and you got the uh, trans cooler right down here. So we're gonna start by removing the trans cooler because like I said, it brackets front to back. And there's just two bolts holding in place. You can see that brown one right there. Let this focus in. So it looks like it's an eight mil or a 10 mil. I can't tell looking at the camera screen right here. And there's another one right over here in this corner. I'm just gonna go ahead and go in there with a small ratchet and uh, do it by hand. And then you got this top bolt right here to get the uh, power steering cooler off. And then the two tabs that it slides into on the radiator itself. Once we get those two things out the way, we can drain the radiator, pull the radiator out, swap over anything we can swap over and put the new one in. That's what I'm about to do right now. And if anyone ever tells you that Texas isn't hot, I mean, I'm dripping sweat right now. We got a storm coming through and it's kind of humid, but man, I could really use a fan right now. Anyways, I'm gonna get to it. Alright, cool. So, I got the radiator out, got it set up over there. The old one at least. Just wanted to show you guys uh, what it looked like. Like I said, you've got the uh, power steering cooler right here. I just pushed it up away from the side. And the trans cooler right here on the bottom, it just kind of hangs there. Uh, you don't really got to do anything crazy. I did drain it. I waited about another 30 minutes. I was able to drain it. I tucked up this hose right there uh, facing upward. A little more flowing came out, but nothing crazy. This upper radiator hose, I took it and I just bent it backward up underneath this um, AC compression line right there. So, like I said, fan shroud, you don't gotta remove it, it stays right there. And now all that's left to do is uh, swap over some of those smaller brackets where the screws go into, onto the new radiator, swap the new radiator in, bolt everything back together, put some new fluid in it, and uh, I'll go over how I like to do it personally. I like to top off that hose and that hose before I put it on, and I like to top off the radiator. Um, I like to top off the radiator before I put on this upper hose to let some of that air escape out of it. So I'll go over that a little more in depth once I get it in the truck. So that's what we're about to do, and uh, let's get it done. All right, so basically what I like to do is I like to look at the old radiator, and you can see that you've got a clip right there, and that's right below the upper a radiator hose so you come down to the new one and you see you gotta put a clip right there come over here you can see there's one below the radiator cap clip goes right there and that actually looks like the only two clips so just grab, uh, grab yourself a clip and look at the orientation on the old one so it looks like this one's gonna be just like that and you're gonna come in here and kind of slide it in place easy as that so that tip I just gave you is pertains to the Ram right now, but it pertains to a lot of other vehicles. You can actually do the same thing with other parts. You know, look at the old parts, see how things are uh, positioned. And if you have to, take a picture, take video. Sometimes when I do these jobs, I gotta go back to the vlog that I was editing to make sure that I'm doing it the right way or I'm putting the bolt where it belongs. So videos and pictures and looking at the old parts, the way things are orientated always helps. So now we got those clips in, let's throw it in the Ram. So everything is put back together, radiator is on, intake is on. Um, so I didn't record it, but I went ahead and topped the fluid off. And now this is how we're going to bleed the system. My hands are all dirty. Uh, so I put a funnel on the top. I like this funnel because it's thin and it goes to the bottom. That way when you fill it, you don't have excess fluid going into the overflow and going into the overflow tank. And you get as much fluid as possible into the radiator. Now, you get a light right here. As you can see, there's fluid right there at the top. 
So when you have it right there at the top, what you wanna do is crank the engine on. Here, I'm just gonna show you guys. All right guys, I'm in the truck now, and what you wanna do is you wanna put your heater to the hottest level, put the vents uh, facing you, so right here in the front. Some people say you can put the defroster on, but I actually prefer this, because you can feel it versus just putting your hand up there on the front. And put your fan on the lowest setting, and then you wanna crank it on, and you wanna keep your eye out on the fluid level. So, let's crank it on. All right, so we got the fluid coming out, not the fluid, got the air coming out of the vents, and you wanna make sure it comes out warm and it stays warm, but it won't cool off to the point where you can't tell that the vehicle is heating up, and you wanna keep your eye out on the cooling level. So that's what we're about to do right now. Now every time the fluid drops, you just wanna go ahead and top it off. Once the engine gets up to temp, the thermostat will open, and you'll see a big drop in the fluid. Go ahead and top it off. Let it keep running while keeping an eye on this fluid and keep an eye on the temperature of the truck. All right, guys, it looks like I got slightly lucky. The way I topped off the radiator, topped off the hoses, it didn't look like it needed any more extra fluid. So once the fluid starts coming out of the radiator cap and the engine is up to operating temp, it's okay to shut it down, uh, put the radiator cap back on, top off if you need to top off anymore. Go take it for a drive, let it warm up. And one telltale sign that you still have air in the system is if you see your temperature gauge auto just out of nowhere jump in temperature, and then after a little while it goes back down. It still means you have air in the system. So I'm gonna go drive this around the block, just make sure everything's tied up neatly, and then uh, park it, wrap up inside the garage, and I think I'll be done. All right guys, so that's how you swap the radiator out on your 03 to 05, 06, maybe even a little uh, newer Rams than that. So it's not what I expected to do today by any means. I just wanted to go get an eyebrow done on the Ram from Ish Window 10. Uh, you know, he knocked it out the park and then I get there and I got a radiator leak. So anyways, ended up patching that up. I got it home, ended up having to go to O'Reilly's. Uh, they had a place to order for the radiator. Got there a couple hours later, get radiator fluid. And then once it got there, let the truck cool down and uh, get all the work done. So hopefully now tomorrow I can get started on either the Infinity or the Challenger. So that wraps up today's video. Next videos will be Challenger or Infinity, either one. Like I said earlier in the video, my goal is to get the Challenger ready for SCCA track night in America. That is supposed to happen September 1st and 2nd at Harris Hill Raceway, but they're also repaving the track. So there could be delays, for example, today was pouring rain, those could be delays. And I did go up there and they mentioned that they might have to push some race days back, but they're definitely gonna try and get as many race days in as possible. All right, guys, so if you like these videos, hit that like button. If you want to see something, leave a comment below. If you love these videos, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys, peace out.